Once you're a graphic designer, the type tool or the text tool is your friend. And in today's video, I'll show you some of the very cool stuff you can do with it. There are two main ways to create text in Photoshop. The first method is to click anywhere in your project with the type tool selected, just a regular cursor click, or you can draw a text box anywhere in your project to start writing text. There are also other cool things you can do with any kind of text you create, as I mentioned earlier, but before you can do all those cool stuff, you have to understand how the type tool works and the features that surround it. So with all that said, let's get straight into Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I already created a blank canvas and I already have my type tool selected by hitting T on my keyboard. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways to create text, right? You can either click on any portion of your project just like this, see that? And it gives us some placeholder text or you can go ahead and just draw a text box, right? I'm just going to click and drag and draw a text box. And this box will be populated with placeholder text in the newer version of Photoshop. You can also turn it on in the previous versions if you'd like, right? And I can obviously size this however I want. And as you see, as I'm sizing this text box here, it's shifting the text to better fit within that text box right all right so there we have our text box version our text box method and our just our clicking method with the cursor all right now let me go ahead and just turn this off and let me just create some new text right let me go ahead and type learn learn share photo video let me make this bigger all right oops all right this is our text that we're working with today or for no in this portion of the tutorial and one of the first cool things that i want to show you guys that you can do within photoshop on your text layer or your type that you typed is that you can increase the leading or the tracking right and you do that by going to window and just clicking character right and it's right here and i already have mine over in my properties tab if you enable your properties tab whatever kind of layer you're working on whether it's a text or a shape, you'll automatically see the properties under that properties tab, right? And in this case, we have our character options over here on the properties tab, and we also have paragraph options and type options, right? You've heard me speak about the properties tab before, but if you don't have yours open, you can find it just the same as the character tab by going to a window here in Photoshop, and then just going down to properties right here, right? All right, so here's the text that we're going to be working with. And if you were to adjust the leading or the tracking, right? The leading is the vertical space between lines of text. So if I want to adjust the leading here, I just like duplicate this, you know, create a second line of text, right? Just so we have multiple lines for the purposes of this tutorial. And then if I were to increase the leading over here, right now it's on auto. If I were to go to something like 30 you see that the vertical space between the lines is being adjusted if i were to go even more to 60 you can see what's happening right and if i were go to go like less than auto or less than see that i'm at 16 right now if i go down to like seven or four you see what's happening right so that's the leading let me just undo that mm control and z to undo as you know right all right let me just set this back to auto and then let me just delete these two lines and let me show you the tracking what the tracking does right what tracking does is it increases the spacing between a group of letters right so if i were to just have my text layer selected this text layer the learn share photo video which it is i can just go ahead to my character tab over here and just increase the tracking see all these figures here if I were to do like 50 or 100, you see it's increasing the space between the groups of letters, meaning the learn is one group of letters, the share is another group, etc., etc. right? And here's a funny story. Before I found out about the character tab earlier when I was using Photoshop, I literally used to just come in between the letters. Let me set this back to zero. I literally used to just come here in between the letters and just go like, 
L space E space A space R space. That's literally how I would space letters earlier in my graphic design journey. And it worked. Nobody knew that's what I did, but it worked, right? And using this kind of um, tracking feature gives a really cin cinematic look, a more professional look, and just a cooler look in whatever you apply it to, if you apply it the right way. All right, and next I want to show you is kerning. Oops, what's happening here? <laughs> kerning, and kerning is just the space in between like each individual letter, right? So if you wanted to, um, and the shortcut for kerning is using the alt key and the left or right arrow keys on your keyboard, right? So if I were to come here, click in between the R and the N here and just go alt on the left key or the right key, you see it's increasing the space right there. See that? Or you can come over to your character tab as usual and just increase the kerning here, right? But to do that, you have to like click in between it, as I mentioned earlier, click in between the two letters and then come over here to your kerning. And then you can just like increase the value, right? That way you can make sure, like, for example, if you're designing a logo, you can manually input your kerning values to make sure that every single letter in your logo, if there's text in your logo or in your design in general, it is all equal space throughout, right? And I also want to show you horizontal and vertical scaling, which is pretty much straightforward. You'll almost probably never use it, but you can like increase the vertical scaling right now. This is at 100%. If I were to go 150, it would just stretch my text as you're seeing here, right? It's literally just stretching the text. Then if I were to put this back to 100, and then increase the horizontal scale, you know what it will do, right? It will literally stretch my text, like make, give it more spread, right? All right, so that's the cool character tab. Ooh, not so much, let's set it back to 100. That's the cool character tab features that you can use, right? And obviously you can choose your font and then like select the different weights of your font here, right? So I'm using circular standard here and it has book, it has book, italic, medium, different weights, etc. right? Bold and then black, which is like thicker than bold, right? And then if I were to go down even further under my properties tab, I have my paragraph options here, right? And if you don't have yours, you can also go up to window and then just turn paragraph on and it will come right here. And if you don't have it over your properties tab, you can literally just drag it over but as i mentioned once you have your properties tab on it should pop up automatically right properties tab is a very cool feature to enable in photoshop right and then you can align its center obviously all right let me change this text here let's just use some placeholder text for this demonstration let me size it down right i'm using a text box as you just saw and then if I were to let me zoom in back some more, oops, <laughs> turn off scrubby zoom. If I were to zoom in, right now it's aligned centered. If I were to like align it to the left over here, you see that everything is aligned to the left, obviously. If I were to align it to the right, you know what would happen. If I were to align it justified, like justified last left, See that it's justifying everything mean that all the lines will fill the width of my text box, but the last line will be aligned to the left, right? If I went justified centered, it will um, justify last center. It will put the last line in the center while everything above it is justified, filling up the width of the text box, right? Like so. And then if I were to do justified last, right? you know, the reverse of a left, obviously. And if I were to justify everything, it will just like spread all the text to fill the text box, every single line, right? And here's a key tip. You can only justify text that is within a text box, right? You can't justify text that is not within a text box. Let me show you what I mean. So if I were to come here and have like multiple line, multiple lines of text, right? Let me just duplicate this. Oops. All right, if I were to have multiple lines of text here, right? And I want to justify this without like using the text box creation method. 
right you realize that the justify features are all grayed out meaning you can't use them right so that's also a key tip to note and let's go back to our previous paragraph if you notice um well right now it's not hyphenated but under your paragraph as well you can go ahead and click hyphenate and it will hyphenate the letter the words that are at the end or closer to the edge of your text box right so like longer words like this right here if it if the hyphenate feature is checked it will do this and hyphenate like you see in some columns in articles and newspapers right but if you uncheck that it will push everything down to the next line instead of hyphenating it and i personally prefer to not hyphenate it just looks cooler to me but maybe your design or maybe your client prefers hyphenation so at least you know how to do it right and of course you also have your type options below that you can go all caps by just clicking this button right here you can do all caps you see what's happening there right you can do um uppercase lowercase or small caps is what they call it right see that every first i think every first well let me type something and show you or let me go back to my um let me go back to the previous text i had here and let me show you with the all caps see that and then uppercase lowercase it's making the first letter of every word uppercase right see that and then the second letters are all caps as well but it's making the first letter bigger than the second ones right and then you can also do like superscript and a subscript that's like if you're writing something like um two to the tenth four you can just like select the 10 and then just go over to superscript and it will push the 10 up top right if you're doing subscript it will do the same thing see that how cool is that you can also do fractions let me turn this off you can also do a fraction if you wanted to write 2 over 10 which is really one fifth um, you can go ahead and just hit the function um, option under your type options and it will just turn that into a fraction for you how cool is that and of course you can do underline strike through and ordinals right they're all right there you can test them out and see all that you can do the next thing i want to show you is you can go ahead and hold shift and press t to cycle through your type tool options or you can go ahead and right click on the type tool from your toolbar on the left hand side of photoshop and you'll notice that you can um, select the horizontal type tool which is the default or you can do a vertical type tool or you can do vertical type masks right i mainly just use the vertical and horizontal types if i wanted to type something like learn share but like vertically right see that how cool is that right and then just a little space in between and you'll see it just automatically did it vertically for me before i found out about this like even earlier in my photoshop journey i used to literally use the regular horizontal type tool and i'd come here and type like l e i'm just literally pressing enter to go down to the next line a r n then space s <laughs> you see that that's so weird and you'll notice doing that is creating more space than if i were using the vertical type tool are you seeing that so the orange one is me just manually going down to the next line but what that will do is going down to the next line will make the space in between the letters the tracking space and not the natural type space if you were to type the letters normally right vertically so you can clearly see the difference here so the proper method to use is the vertical type tool right all right let's us move on and the next thing i want to show you is typing on a path right so if you were to go ahead and hit P for your pen tool you can go ahead and draw a path right so let's go ahead and just draw a path here clicking our first point let's make some curves so it's cooler right yeah that's pretty cool right and then now that you have a path you can go ahead and hit your type tool right by pressing T and then just clicking on this path but before you click let's just hover the cursor over the path and you see what happens there Look at the cursor before it's regular right and then if i hover over 
you'll see that a little diagonal line comes within the cursor. You see that? And what that's telling me is I'm able to type on that path, right? Because that little diagonal squiggly line across the cursor is representing a path, right? So let's go ahead and just click here and then we can type on the path. But if you look at what's happening, if I just hold control here and then just drag the arrow out, like click and drag out, you can see I'm getting all of the text visible now, right? And if I were to drag it down underneath the path, it would flip it, see that? That's not what I want, I just want to see everything, right? Let me just go ahead and change this font, this text. Oops, let me just change it to something that I want. Let's write, learn, all right, this is how to, let me make this bigger. This is how you type on a path in <laughs> Photoshop. But that's too big. Let me just size it down some more. See that? How cool is that, right? And there you just typed on a path, right? How cool is that, guys? How cool is that? Now, I remember when I hit control on my keyboard or command if you're on a Mac, what I, when I clicked the arrows, I cho chose the arrow that was pointing to the left, right? And I just dragged it out to the right, right? All right, let's go ahead and do another path or type on another path. Let's go ahead and draw a circle right here. And if I wanted, I have two options here, right? I can go ahead and just type by hitting T on my keyboard and then I can go within the circle and you can see what's happening. It's giving me that circle around the cursor, right? And what that's telling me is I can type within that shape, right? And you can see it put the placeholder, wait, let me change the color of the placeholder text. It's telling me that I can type within that shape. And as you can see, it's conforming the text to the shape that I have, right? The shape that I made the type on, right? But if I wanted to type like outside of it, like if I want to, let me turn this off. If I wanted to hit T again for my type tool, select my shape or my path, and then type on the path as I did earlier, you can see it's letting me type on the outside, right? And I can go ahead and just write again. This is how you type on a path. And as you know, I can just like change the direction of this text, right? Let me hit U or P on my keyboard, U for the shape tool or P for the pen tool and I can just drag out either edge, right? I can twist around or I can bring it on the inside of the path like so, right? This looks cool. I like this one here. All right, let me just adjust it. All right, and then I can just increase the size by hitting Control and T, and then I can just like make the text bigger so it fits like outside of the path, right? How cool is that? But well, that's not what we're doing today. Let's focus. <laughs> Let me turn these off. And here is my question of the day to you guys. With all that we've done here today, have you seen it before? Is it the first time you're seeing it? And if any of this helped you, are you ready to start applying these cool features that we discovered today and start getting more creative with your typing in your designs? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Tijam and I will see you guys in the next video.